Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, as, or as I'd call it, Dark Souls, the Star Wars edition, because at the core of it's this game, this is what you will get. Dark Souls, in a more mainstream fashion, with difficulty levels, with more platforming, but very much still a Souls game. With many of the same mechanics, much of the same emphasis on, say, exploration of the world, uh, of a very dangerous world that will chew you and spit you out and you will die, die, and die again. When, this, when I first picked up this game, it said very clearly, you can play with whatever controller you want or mouse and keyboard, but this game is for a controller. Very clearly, this is what the game developers literally said. And of course, I took that as a gauntlet thrown down and decided to beat the entire game on Jedi Grandmaster difficulty using the mouse and keyboard. And I'm here to argue that not only is mouse and keyboard quite viable, but in fact superior to a controller. I have a controller. I'm not necessarily shy about using it. I've just never really seen a reason to do so for really any game that I've played. I've played Dark Souls where people did discover after lengthy debates and after quite a few years, they did discover there are quite a few advantages, significant ones, especially, you know, if you're a hardcore PvP or in Dark Souls or a you know hardcore player in that game, there are quite a few advantages to mouse and keyboards. And those advantages do make mouse and keyboards superior to a controller in quite a few ways. But it does depend on how competent you are at the end of the day with the mouse and keyboard and how competent you are with the controller. If you're someone really good with the controller but not so good with the mouse and keyboard, then yeah, you can, you can play with the controller instead of trying to learn how to play on an optimal level with the mouse and keyboard. That's one big takeaway, right? If you're good with mouse and keyboard, play with mouse and keyboard. If you're good with the controller and not so good with mouse and keyboard, play with the controller. But there are several advantages to talk about here. And there is this disconnect between quite a few game developers, you know, from software and others, right? And now Respawn basically saying in their own game, yeah, play with the controller. There, is, there seems to me that there is this disconnect between game developers and actual gamers. I mean, think about it. What is this game? It's a game about precise timing. It's about fast reactions. Well, okay, but that's... But a lot of PC gamers play, you know, think of League of Legends, World of Warcraft, Starcraft, Warcraft 3, many other games, not just shooters, not just shooters, MOBAs, very popular on PCs, probably the most popular games on the planet right now, are games all about, you know, precise timings, where you, if you screw up your ability usage, if you don't use your, your abilities at the right time, in the right way, you can wipe your enti entire team, or in World of Warcraft, you can wipe your entire raid, or... In StarCraft, you can lose a match or many matches if you're if you're not using it properly. So why is this idea, in from so many game developers and actually quite a few gamers, that oh you don't necessarily have the same precise precision, I guess, in timings with mouse and keyboard as with a controller? It's a bunch of nonsense, and that's really what I'm I'm here to talk. But first, we need to understand what kind of game we're dealing with and how things work on mouse and keyboard versus a controller because there is a difference and that difference needs to be talked about first and foremost so in the game i looked at the responsiveness of various keybinds various abilities and how well the game handles it on both a mouse and keyboard and on a controller. And personally, having tried both of them out, having tried various attacks, movement, so on, I didn't notice any particular difference. The game seems to respond equally well to either a mouse and keyboard or a controller. And that is an argument that people bring out, oh, it's the controller is more responsive. Not really. And really, when you're talking about responsiveness in games, there's a whole bunch of factors that do go in it. I'm not saying that what your that your input method doesn't matter, but what I am saying that there's other things that do matter as well. Your monitor, the game's performance, your FPS, your resolution, all you know, <laughs> your resolution affecting that the, the game's performance, and so on. This game is not necessarily the best optimized in history. It does have some issues. I think a lot of developers are struggling quite a bit with, uh, with Unreal Engine specifically. 
And that's uh, interesting to see because Unreal Engine 3 was pretty much the engine that a lot of developers use. Nowadays, not so much. And now Respawn does want to have some independence from EA. Uh, so that's the reason that they're going with it as far as I can tell. Instead of, you know, say using something like Frostbite. But in terms of how the game responds, fairly well. Now let's talk about the keybinds, specifically the default ones. It, mostly fine, but a bit awkward in some situations. Like when you're talking about keybinds, it's important to understand how you use your hand. Your thumb, you use it on space, and anything from X to B. That's what you're gonna use your thumb on. So jumping, switching from single bladed to dual bladed, and V and B obviously, you know, free binds, but you can use those. Uh, you can also use your thumb to, you know, press Alt if you want to use that as a keybind. That's just a general rule for other games as well. Uh, then your index finger, anything from D, which is you know, what you're going to use it mostly for your movement. Then E, R, F, T, G. So a, bu a lot of binds in within easy reach for it. A couple of others, not so much. Your middle finger, W, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Those are fairly all uh, all within fair, uh, fairly easy reach for your middle finger. Your uh, ring finger, generally on A and Q, not so much on anything else. Now, this is a fairly general setup. You can obviously customize it to your own preference. Your pinky, everything from control to caps lock. And yes, caps lock is an actual bind that you can use. There's no reason to not do so. It's within easy reach, and you can use your pinky. <laughs> in fact, I probably use uh, in some games. I probably use the pinky probably too much. I like I, it actually hurt me when I was playing uh, Dark Souls, just because of all the blocking movement and all that. But still, obviously, the main thing you're gonna use it here is uh, your running speed. Now, with the game itself. The binds, the default binds mostly work. I did have a problem doing something like this, where I use the pull ability to drag an object to me, and then pressing the two button, which is your push. So free by default is pull, and then you do push. Everything else seems to work just fine. I'm not necessarily fond of parry being on the right mouse, mouse button. It reminds me of how The Witcher 3 set it up, and honestly, the default keybinds do remind me quite a bit of The Witcher uh, 3, but, um, but they are workable. And they're not necessarily hor horrible. You can play the game, even beat the game, with the default keybinds. And that really does work. The only thing that I do find awkward is your evade. Now, you're gonna evade quite a bit in this game, especially in a difficulty like Grandmaster. Uh, the reason behind that is, on a lower, you know, in comparison to Dark Souls, on a lower difficulty are more like someone with a target shield or someone with a big shield. You're blocking a lot of attacks and you're looking for that timing between those blocks or you're looking for a perfect block or perfect parry, basically, uh, to be able to counterattack. The problem is that really doesn't work on a high difficulty. Instead, what you're going to do on a high difficulty, you're more so gonna play like a character with either low HP or low armor in Dark Souls but a lot of mobility. That's how you're gonna play this game. You're not gonna focus on parries, you're gonna focus more on evasion. And the issue is, given the fact that you're already using your thumb to, by default, with X and C, which are switching between weapon styles, then space, having to use the Z key to evade and you're gonna evade a lot, feels a bit awkward. So if I go to controls, you can very well, very easily set it to E. And yes, you will, uh, you can use the interact key F, that works generally quite well. Uh, and of course that, <laughs> uh, that does unbind some other things, but that's, uh, that, that, that unbinds Q, you can use force attack, all right, and heal, I set that to T. That's what I found worked quite well for me, but that's, you know, my personal choice. That's my personal choice with respect to it, uh, with respect to how I would set my keybinds. But one of the things that's important with keybinds is that you set them up in a way that's comfortable 
for your hand. And by the way, this obviously applies to a controller as well. You do have key, uh, uh, customization for the controller as well over here in the menu. That's pretty nice. So you have full re, uh, revamped buttons for your controller. Go for whatever it's, is most comfortable. Actually put some thought into that. Don't just do it on random. But for the most part, the default uh, key binds do work. The one thing I did have to change, and I did get stuck in this room quite a bit, I had to change my push to caps lock. Because it is a bit awkward to try and push, uh, to try and pull and push when that's set to two and, uh, to three and two on, on your keyboard. So caps lock uh, can work quite well in that situation. Now, why is the Monson keyboard superior? I haven't gotten into that. Well, camera control. Like this is one of the things that really needs to be talked about. There's a lot of platforming in this game and just being able to so easily see around you with the faster camera, the more precise camera that you get via the mouse is a really big deal. In fact, it's also a big deal in Dark Souls, but it goes further than that. Yes, you have a lock-on system, but you will not necessarily want to use it on a high difficulty. You will want a free camera so you can see other things around you, other opponents around you, other situations going on, on around you as a player. So you want to play with the free ca camera and that's where it goes better. Now, directional attacks are a thing to consider and this is where you could call it the difference between a controller and mouse and keyboard. So when you attack, you can change the direction of your attack with your movement keys and obviously the left thumb stick by default on a controller but you can also use the mouse or the camera the right thumb stick on a controller you can also use the mouse to control it how you press a movement key or, uh, you just press a, a single movement key and you look in a specific area and your character will attack in that area. And of course you can combine it with W and S and D to get more precision. And that is rather important. But you can do that both controller, mouse and keyboard. It just really is that camera precision that, that does make the difference. Because during the puzzle solving, which will require you to look around your environment and just how easy easier that is and also being able to uh, uh, also being able to switch between stances for instance and Dark Souls one of the things that people did realize is hey it's much easier to keep control of your character but also use spells switch between spells you don't have that same thing here uh, but you do obviously have you know lightsaber stances or what lightsaber you're using double bladed or single bladed that does uh, matter as well here in a fairly significant bit that's my personal conclusion what i've discovered look if if it was better with the controller i'd say so but i've never seen a reason to argue that with dark souls and i just don't see a reason to do so with this i think one of the things to mention here about this game is it's really a great success of the entire Soul series and the fact that this, it's gone pretty much mainstream. You can't get more mainstream than Star Wars. You just really can't. <laughs> the fact that we have a Souls-like game that's a Star Wars game is a really great success story there. And it shows that gaming companies have heard the voices loud and clear, that people that they understand, well, maybe not understand, but that they've come to accept that people do like a game in this particular you know, gameplay style. And that's a good thing. Though it does feel to me, playing through the game, that... Uh, that a lot of... Uh, uh, that a lot of the develop... Uh, that uh, a lot of it was developed for a different style. Ooh. Nasty rat. Yeah. Sorry, getting distracted trying to commentate and also 
uh, also fight these things. But that's the main takeaway there. Kosin here, signing out. Thank you all for watching, and stay tuned for more.